There we go. Okay, so looking at this equation up here. All right, so we're going to do the end of 6.3 solving systems with elimination. We'll need to multiply the bottom equation, right? I know to multiply the bottom equation because those are smaller, right? So I want to make this, if I'm getting rid of x's, I want to change this just x into negative 2x. I do that by multiplying by negative 2. I'm going to distribute to all three parts, like always, even across the equal sign. I'm going to rewrite the top equation first, and then rewrite the bottom one multiplied. And then we have negative 2x plus 3y equals negative 18. Oops, I screwed the middle term up. Fix that. Oh, it's doing a weird laggy thing. <clears throat> um, so negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6y. So what happens? What do both sides equal? Show me with your hands. Combine like terms vertically. 0, 2. <laughs> That's better. All right. So you get 0 equals 0. So what does that mean? No solution or infinite solution? Somebody unmute and tell me. No or infinite solution? Infinite solution. Infinite solution, right? Because when you have the same number equals the same number, that means any number you plug in will work for the equation, right? So we have infinite Like for these equations, how do you know whether to like add them, like when you're doing it vertically, or subtract them? You do neither. You just do whatever the signs tell you to do. So it's positive 2 minus 2, 0. Positive 6 minus 6, 0. 18 minus 18, 0. Now, sometimes you guys get confused, right? Because if you looked at the solutions for last night's homework, they always subtract the equations. I don't think that's the best way to do it. That's why I don't teach it that way. Um, just do what the signs tell you to do, and whatever variable you're trying to eliminate, just make sure you have opposite signs, and that kind of automatically eliminates the variable. All right. I'm going to grab another problem from the homework. Uh, let me grab the textbook just so I can make sure I know what the answer is. <clears throat> I want to do a no solution one this time, so I don't feel like doing it in my head. Give me one second. All right, so we'll do... 21. And again, the directions say I'm just going to copy those directions as well. Something to the effect of tell whether it has infinite or no solutions. Okay, there you go. So we're telling whether the system has one solution, infinitely many, or no solution. So I'm just going to write it bigger. Okay, 
So if I want to get rid of a variable, all I have to do is multiply one of the two equations by negative one. When you multiply one of the equations by negative one, all that happens is every sign switches, right? So if it helps you to like erase the plus sign right here, erase the plus sign, right? It's going to be eight minus eight, nine minus nine. So we get zero on the left, and 15 minus 30 is negative 15. Okay, so when the two numbers don't equal, basically when all the variables cancel and the two numbers don't equal one another, that means no solve. Okay. So I know from looking at some people's homework that that story problem 13 was one that you needed a little assistance on. Um, you can ask me questions about the homework. I'm going to do 13 regardless. But so if you didn't understand how to do some on the homework, you can ask me questions now. Understand as well, if you just leave a problem blank or you put a question mark next to it, I just count that off on your homework. So just please stop doing that. Um, just give it some attempt and then I can give you credit, right? And it's good to start trying to grind through these story problems so you can begin to understand them because you will see them for the rest of your academic life. So you just got to get used to them. So we are going to do number 13. It's my little smart board curls to get this. <clears throat> He's not cooperating today, that's okay. <clears throat> Too big. It's funny how long it takes to go through the uh, like display for you guys. Come on. Okay, you can read it. It says, your school's talent show will feature 12 solo acts and two ensemble acts. The show will last 90 minutes. The six solo performers judged best will give a repeat performance at a second 60-minute show, which will also feature two ensemble acts. Each solo act lasts six minutes. Each ensemble act lasts some sort of minutes, I can't see it. Let me move it a little more. Um, last Y minutes, right? So they identify the variables for you, which is handy. Now, when I look at these story problems, I just read that first sentence. The first thing I come across is solo X. So I'm gonna make that my X, and then ensemble X. That's gonna be my Y which is exactly what they did down here towards the bottom. <clears throat> so if we have 12 solo and two ensemble acts, it's simply 12x plus 2y. And then the first show will last 90 minutes. So equals 90. OK? So some of you students that make these so hard, stop doing that. It's not that hard, right? 12x to y equals 90. Boom. No problem. The second one, you have six solos, so 6x. It says you're still going to have two ensemble x, so 2y. And then the second show is going to last 60 minutes. So there you go. So if I want to get rid of the y's, since I have both positive y's, I can just multiply one of the two equations by negative one 
and get rid of those Y's. So that just switches all the signs on the bottom there. So one little helpful hint I have for this kind of situation when you have two signs is that the negative always wins, right? Because you'll get confused. Do I add or subtract here? The negative always wins, so it's 2 minus 2. So those y's are going to cancel. And if you enjoy aggressively canceling like many do, then go for it. Okay, so 12 minus 6 is 6x. Six 90 minus 60 is 30. And then all I got to do is divide by 6. And we get x equals 5. And we're talking about the minutes. How long is this solo act? Five minutes. Right, which kind of makes sense given a performance of this type. Solo act's going to be short. The ensemble where everybody is participating will be a little bit longer. So we need to plug into one of the two equations. I'm going to plug into the top one. You, Mia, you have to make them negative so the y's cancel. If you like, however, doing it where you subtract the equations, you can do that. I just see students make a ton of mistakes when they do. Um, so I recommend not doing that. Again, I'm just going to put a nice dividing line so I, it's easier for me when I grade your stuff or for you when you look back at it to understand what's going on. And we're going to plug in, I'm just going to rewrite the top equation, plug in the 5 for the x in that top equation. So this 5 is what x equals, is going right there. So we have 12 times 5 plus 2y equals 90. And then all we have to do is solve for y. So 12 times 5 is 60 plus 2y equals 90. So on the quiz today, there's a problem kind of like this. It's a little more challenging than this problem, um, but completely doable. I gave you a little helpful hint on that problem. Remember to, you get two attempts on the quiz, and you gotta have that quiz done today. Like today's homework has to be done today by midnight, so don't forget that. <clears throat> so we have two y equals 30. Divide both sides by 2, and you get y equals 15. And we're talking minutes here, so y equals 15 minutes. Okay, don't forget units. Do not forget units. All right, any other questions on the homework? I saw, like, you guys don't ask these questions. It makes me kind of crazy. When I teach Algebra 2 next semester, when I ask if people have questions, I'll have more questions than I can cover. Because two years from now, you guys will figure out school better and know to ask questions because it helps you learn. <clears throat> That's why I like teaching freshmen, because I like to teach you these things, right? Like asking questions helps. That's kind of a duh comment, right? But it does. Um, any other questions on this past homework? Nope. Okay, I'm going to stop the video. One second.